ETA MCIC Windows Server 2012 Exam 412 Configure and Advance Windows Server 2012 Services My name is Adibayo Kolo, I'll be the um, instructor for this session In this session we're going to be talking about different topics that includes Module 1, Implementing Advanced Network Services We're going to talk about stuff such as DNS, DHCP then we're gonna to go to implementing module two is implementing advanced file services. We're gonna talk about iSCSI branch cache. Then module three is dynamic access control. Dynamic access control is very popular today because of bring your own device. Bring your own device allow users to bring their own device. Devices that are not joined to the domain. They are, users can bring devices such as laptops tablets and phone and use it to connect to the network module 4 is implementing distributed active directory domain services deployment we're going to talk about um, active directory domain services active directory domain services has been around since the uh, windows 2000 uh, then it was just directors active directory services now we have five active directory services but we're going to talk about Active Directory Domain Services. We're also going to talk about the Azure um, Active Directory Domain Services also. Module 5 is implementing Active Directory Domain Services sites and replication. We're going to look at Active Directory sites, how to create Active Directory sites, how to create subnets, how to configure replication. And we're going to do that as well as some hands-on lab. Module 6 is implementing Active Directory Certificate Services. Active Directory Certificate Services used to be called PKI, Public Key Infrastructure. With PKI allow you to have components such as um, Certification Authority, the Certificates, CRL, and then on and on like that. We're going to talk about Active Directory Certificate Services in Module 6. Module 7 is implementing Active Directory Rights Management Services. We're going to look at Rights Management Services. That's an addition to your NTFS security and encryption. Act Rights Management Services actually extends security to include um, emails and um, files and folders. Somebody send you, for example, somebody send you a file, you try to print it, you couldn't print it, you try to forward it, you couldn't forward it. Because of the um, lock they put in the documents for security reason. Then module 8 is Active Directory Federation Services. Which is very, very important when you are doing stuff such as um, collaboration. You have two organizations doing a collaboration. Active Directory Federation Services allow the access token to carry over from one forest to another network that does not, even con does not have a forest trust with you. The module 9 is network load balancing, allow you to load balance the load. Without load balancing, you can have like 20 users connect to, to one server, and they have two other servers that are not really doing anything. They're just sitting there idle. But failover cluster will allow you to balance it based on round robin, based on number of connections, and other criteria you can establish. Uh, module 10 is implementing failover clustering. Fit of a cluster allow you if there's um if you have two servers or you know fit of a clustering can have up from two to thirty two servers in the cluster. If one of them fails, it's gonna fail over to the other uh, servers. So there is continuity, so there is no breaking communication, breaking um break in or disruption in access to information and resources. Module 11 is implementing business continuity and disaster recovery plan. We're going to look at backup, different type of backups, and we're going to look at shadow copies and um, different ways to, to back up your data and restore your data in case there's a disaster.